Is the reopening trade fizzling out a little bit? For more on that, I'm joined by Chris Zaccarelli, the Chief Investment Officer of the Independent Advisor Alliance, and Noah Blackstein is Portfolio Manager of the Dynamic Funds. Uh, Chris, I'll start with you, and welcome to you both. Um, you know, one day we have the kind of back-to-normal trade <laughs> working really well. The next day we're taking a step back. I mean, how, how would you kind of describe the landscape here, and, and you know, what would your advice be in this environment? Sure. Uh, you know, from where we sit, we, there's been an incredible recovery in the stock market, obviously, since the lows in, in March. And we think a lot of the good news is priced in. So at this point, we're getting a little more cautious. We think there's about three things that the market's going to really focus on for the rest of the year. And that'll probably help determine the presidential election as well. First thing is U.S.-China relations. Second will be how uh, technology companies face increasing regulatory threats. And then finally, how the, how the pandemic uh, coronavirus uh, situation is handled by the administration. If the administration can handle those three things well, they're looking at another four years. We're going to see uh, independents and people in swing states vote to keep the current uh, leadership in, in charge. However, if any of those things go wrong, it could be a, a toss up and we could see a change election. So I think those things will both move the markets as well as determine the outcome in November. It's an interesting point, Noah, especially on tech regulation. And I'm curious how big of a risk factor you think that might be when you think about uh, some of the other things like rising interest rates. Uh, if we do get that trend to continue, I know that's a big if. Um, does that pose a threat to the NASDAQ? And by the way, I I've even heard people say, look, if there is uh, a, more of a hiccup in U.S. China, that also puts uh, some of the NASDAQ companies at more risk. Do any of those factors concern you? Well, I think what you touched on. Uh, yeah, I would say all of those factors are a concern. Sorry. I mean, I think the interest rate situation is a little bit more impactful for for financial for financials in a positive way yeah. and for utilities and other rate sensitive uh, sectors in, in, a, in a negative way. But absolutely, tech regulation is going to be a big issue that's going to be with us for the rest of this year. And that attacks the leadership of the market. So at this point, the market's really off to the races. However, we could be susceptible for some pullbacks due to those factors. Yeah. Noah Blackstein, uh, what about you? So I think the original question you sort of had asked about is, is, is sort of this, this rally of sort of the beaten down sectors um, versus uh, some of the things that have been benefiting more recently from uh, from the, this digital transformation. I think these, some of these trends were in place before this pandemic and sort of um, were have been accelerated because of it. I do think though that if you look at the leadership from the bottom at the end of uh, from the bottom on around March 23rd, it hasn't been technology that's been the best performing sector. In fact, on a year date basis, it has. But from the lows, things like energy stocks are, are in the leadership, followed by health care and then consumer discretionary and tech have been sort of battling between uh, third and, and fourth. And so there's been, a, there's been a big move in some of the more distressed sectors more recently. I think some of that has to do with the Fed buying and, and tightening, up, um, tightening up the yield curve, uh, excuse me, the, the, the tightening up spreads. Part of that also has to do with green shoots. I mean, we're clearly hearing as companies are opening uh, throughout most of the economy that, that customers are coming back. Uh, in many ways. In fact, some retailers are saying sales are up year over year. So there, there certainly are green shoots as this economy is reopening. I do think, though, that the last couple of days, there's been talk going around that the Federal Reserve might be targeting the yield curve, mm. the shape or the slope of the yield curve. And I think that's sent a whole bunch of quantitative funds uh, into a massive rotation. So you see things like Nordstrom's up 33 percent in, in a couple of days. I'm not sure that's fundamentally justified. But to me, that would you like know, it, connect out. those dots for us real quickly? Uh, why, if the Fed's uh, talking about or people think they might target the yield curve, could that result in quant funds rotating into something like Nordstrom? You know, no matter how different they all tell you that they are, they all seem to be triggering off the, the shape and the slope of the yield curve. So the steeper the yield curve, um, to an extent, they believe is 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 a sign to get more cyclical. There is another part of that, a big chunk of these value indexes. And I've been a growth manager for 25 years. You know, a group of people at 55 Water Street aren't going to define what a value in a growth stock is for me. Of course, I look at valuation as a growth manager. But what I'm saying, though, is that um, a lot of these value indexes are, are terrible and contain a tremendous amount of financials. And a sloping up and, and, a, and a positive sloping yield curve is actually very good uh, for the banks. So it could have triggered, that could have been triggered yeah. an anticipatory change uh, to get this huge move in the banking index. I don't think we've seen the KRE move this much in a few days since the end of the global financial crisis. Yeah. 
Um, we don't even know if the Fed is going to target the yield curve. So it's all anticipatory. Right, and right. Which uh, tells you, Chris, that if we get some headlines saying maybe they won't, uh, maybe to watch out below. I'll give you the final word on where you uh, where would you would be placing your money. So right now, I think you have to take a look at the situation that the, the market's doing well. We could see this recovery continue, and you want to be positioned for that economic expansion. So within the cyclicals, we think the financials have the most value. They're both inexpensive at a price to book around 1.1 times book. And, and for, for that reason, we think there's a margin of safety. If things get a lot better, you'll see the banks continue to outperform, and they're going to have a great rest of the year. However, if things do pull back and, and the economy does, does run into some hiccups, we think that margin of safety will protect you on the downside. So from a risk-reward point of view, we like the financials the most. All right. Chris Zaccarelli, Noah Blackstein, thank you both today.